Hello and welcome to Module 5 for N486, your capstone course. This week we're going to be talking more about the next steps for your project. The next steps and the things that you will be writing up this week include the things that are on this slide. You'll be looking at the differences between the literature and your interview, what things were similar and what things were different. Um, in practice from what was recommended in the literature that you read on your subject. You'll be looking at transferability or generalizability of implementing the, what's um, acknowledged in the literature into your selected practice setting. You'll be identifying areas for potential change in the actual practice setting. And lastly, developing a plan for implementation within the practice setting that will include a change theory the feasibility, process evaluation activities, and the outcome evaluation methods. We're gonna go through each of these components on a separate slide to help you understand these various components of what you're going to need to be planning for. So the first part is transferability or generalizability. And these questions are directly off to the handout for transferability and feasibility that is posted to your Blackboard um, site. So the first thought, and this is focusing on the literature, so this is not focused on what was found in the interview, but will the innovation fit in the proposed setting? So if you're talking about, let's say, aromatherapy, would um, implementing aromatherapy fit within your proposed setting? If, the, if you're looking at a hospice setting, the answer might be yes. If you're looking at an OR, the answer might be no because they're vastly different settings. And so thinking about the innovation and that fit. So be sure you're talking to that. Um, the second question you're gonna wanna talk to when thinking about transferability is how similar are the target populations in the research compared to the new setting? So what was going on? Were the target populations in the research different or similar to those that you're proposing in your current setting? And how might that impact? The third question, are there a sufficiently large number of clients in the practice setting who could benefit from the innovation? So again, if we go back to the example of aromatherapy, uh, if we're talking about a hospice setting, there probably is a large number of clients at any given time within a hospice setting. So that would likely benefit from that in innovation. It's much different than um, you know, a smaller unit or trying to implement it in a different unit where there wouldn't really be a significant out, um, impact. Uh, the fourth question is, will the innovation take too long to implement and evaluate? So what's the timeline that is expected? And some of this can be what was listed in the, in the literature. How long did they um, implement? How long did they evaluate? So this might be part of um, that planning. So is it going to require a lot of education, a lot of change, a lot of finances? All those things could kind of go into how, if it would take too long or not. The next question is what can you change? So this is really deciding what you can actually do and what, what change you're actually going to propose within your setting. So this is a little bit different than saying, yep, I'm gonna do the whole thing. So maybe you, if we talk about the aromatherapy, cause I'm gonna use that as my example for this. So say you really intended as you went through your literature review and you were hoping to implement this change with every single patient within the hospice setting. And you get to some of the um, components and especially that last question on the transferability and recognize that maybe there's gonna be some hurdles. And so you might need to um, change your plan for implementation. And so now you've decided you're going to implement only with the inpatient hospice um, clients or only the outpatient hospice clients. Um, for a variety of reasons. And so maybe you're just tailoring it down to a smaller group or a single unit um, before going bigger with this change. Um, there might be some other ideas and there's gonna be a variety of reasons why you might not just jump full in um, to this change. So that's one area that could focus. What is actually achievable and doable for the setting that you're proposing? The next is where you're actually going to write up about how your change theory is going to be used to guide your um, process implementation. So this is where you're really thinking about, okay, now I've decided that I am going to use aromatherapy, but I'm only going to use it on inpatient hospice clients. 
So now you have to think about how are you going to go through? What do you need to do to make that be successful? This is likely going to be some education, some training, some obtaining of resources or funds to support um, the project if it is a cost, um, getting um, buy-in from some key stakeholders to the project. So those kinds of things are going to be considered while you're applying this change theory and it's going to be very similar to what we were doing during the discussion board in the week prior. After you've thought about your change or even really during your apply, applying your change theory to your process change, you will also be thinking about uh, feasibility. So feasibility is going to need to come up during that change theory because this looks at the ability to actually implement this change within the setting. So this is based on your proposed change and it's looking at the feasibility of your practice setting that you're proposing this for. So feasibility, there's 10 questions. And again, this is on that handout that's posted to Blackboard, um, looks at 10 different questions and we're gonna go through each of these. So the first question, do nurses have the freedom to carry out the innovation and then terminate the innovation if it's considered undesirable? So for aromatherapy, you, this might be that the nurses have a protocol on what nursing diagnoses would be um, would benefit from aromatherapy and what certain types of aromatherapy. So maybe they're focusing on aromatherapy in pain and hospice patients. So they would have the ability to utilize that, but then also the ability to if, if it's undesirable or maybe um, not effective for a client, that they can terminate that use. So it would be a nurse-based protocol for that process. And in some cases, you do need more buy-in. And so that would then, if, if it is a, an implementation um, topic that requires more buy-in from other staff, then that's going to come up later in this feasibility process. The second question, will the implementation interfere with current staff functions? So is it going to change how you currently function? Is it gonna change uh, patient ratios? Is it gonna require um, a higher level of patient care? Anything along that line that might impact that feasibility of implementation? Number three, does the administration support the innovation? And is the organizational climate conducive to utilizing evidence-based practice and research into the setting? And that one's pretty straightforward. If those are kind of yes or no. And again, if they're not, then you're going to address that. And how do you plan to help to get them on board um, to the change if it's very important to you? The fourth one, is there consensus among the staff and administrators that this could be beneficial? And are there major pockets of resistance or uncooperativeness that could undermine efforts? So what are the barriers, basically? What are the supporting factors from the staff and that's on the unit that you're proposing? And what are the barriers among the staff on that unit? The fifth question looks at to what extent will the implementation of the innovation cause friction within the organization? Um, and is there support and cooperation of departments outside of um, the nursing department. And so this really closely relates to the fourth question. So you're really looking at what are going to be some of those barriers? What are going to be some of the hurdles that might have to be addressed in order for this project to be successful? The sixth question is, are the skills needed to carry out the project available in the nursing staff? So both implementation and clinical evaluation. If they're not, how difficult would it be to secure um, assistance of others with the necessary skills? So let's look back to aromatherapy. Maybe the nurses aren't comfortable with that process of using aromatherapy with patients. So how readily accessible would it be to collaborate with others to gain that knowledge and to um, essentially provide some education to then help get that comfort level um, at a higher component? So what, what is the needs to educate and to provide some additional training to staff. The seventh question, does the organization have the equipment facilities necessary for the innovation? So this goes into some of the cost components. So what are the costs that would be associated with this? So for, if you're do, thinking aromatherapy, you're gonna need to be buying the essential oils, but also some kind of um, diffuser, whether it's a, an individual diffuser, a necklace, or something along that line. But how are you going to then do that? Those are costs associated with that. Um, 
some projects have limited or almost no costs with them, but you need to consider that because that is um, a potential barrier. Uh, cost is always something that we're in a constant battle against. Um, the eighth question is would nursing staff need to be released from practice activities to learn about this? So if we're going to need some education, how are you going to account for the time needed for that education and not take away from patient care that is also needed? So what would be the balance and how would you offer that? And make sure that you're thinking about that when you think about your change process. The ninth um, question is, are there appropriate measuring tools available for clin clinical evaluation of the innovation? So this will vary depending on what you're doing. So if you are looking at pain and the impact of aromatherapy on pain in hospice patients, and we know that that can be beneficial, so we're gonna impact that. But how are we gonna track that and measure that effectiveness? And that one's pretty simple because we do pain scales and pain assessments on clients on a regular basis already. So that's a good measuring tool that's reliable to assess that. Depending on your um, what innovation you're talking about. If you're looking at things that might benefit staff retention or burnout, you might be looking at um, staff turnover rates or retention rates over a six month or one year period to see if there's any change, um, to see if that innovation was effective in decreasing turnover. Um, you, things like that. So there's, it has to be measurable. How are you going to measure it? Um, and make sure that it was successful or not successful and then either grow the program or change it completely and uh, revisit the topic. And then the last question, how does the innovation relate the organizations to the organization's strategic plan or goals? So these are going to look at your individual organization and is there something within that organization that supports this? So maybe it's related to patient satisfaction, comfort, um, pain control, pain management might be part of it. Maybe you have um, something related to safety and your project could be addressing part of your organizational goals related to safety. Um, so there's a variety of things that it could, reasons that it could support your organizational goals, but you want to ensure that because that really impacts feasibility. If this is a big ticket item, and for example, um, if you're talking pain, pain control is a huge item with not just organizational strategic plans, but also many of the accrediting bodies. And so that usually is a selling fact. If you can get buy-in from the accreditors and it fits their demands for the organization, then you're likely going to get buy-in from the organization as well. So feasibility covers a lot of those things. So you're basically gonna go through and make sure that as you're writing up that, that you're considering all of those various components. Next then is this evaluation, and some of this you kind of talked a little bit about during that feasibility. So how will you evaluate the change process and how you'll evaluate the outcomes of the change? And these are two distinctly different components. So the outcomes of the change would be the things that we talked about in feasibility. Do you have the ability to measure the impact of the innovation on, on patient care? So if you're looking at pain scales or staff turnover rates, that would be evaluating the outcomes of the change. Did it impact in the way that um, was intended or, or hoped for. The other process, for, the other evaluation component is the process evaluation. And so this actually looks at um, how did the implementation go? Um, did the education go well? Were there any hurdles that were unpredicted during that um, process? So how are you going to evaluate that? So this could be um, often in the form of a, a survey. Uh, so you could survey the staff on the unit about the implementation. And if you think of when you've gone to CEU type events or any kind of training things, there's often a, an evaluation form on the content of that. And so this wouldn't be more like that kind of an evaluation. So how did the change go? And using that type of implement or evaluation process to evaluate that. Um, change process in beyond the outcome evaluation um, assessments.